Welcome to British summertime, everybody, and a glorious day here in some Welsh woods. Now, today we are going to be talking all about how to ride the steep stuff. Now, be that shoots, turns, berms, and everything in between, I've got you covered. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea whilst I endure this horrible weather, and let's get on to how to ride steep terrain. Okay, everybody, bike setup. I wanna talk about how you can make this work for going down stuff like this, because there are a few adaptations you can make to your bike to actually make it more comfortable and a lot more safer and better handling, if you like, when the trails get wild. So first up, let's talk about tires. Now, when it gets steep, it generally does get a little bit slower. So you can afford to drop your pressures a touch. Now, I would normally run mine at 23, 25. On a wet day like today, I'd actually drop them to maybe 20 to 22. So that's 20 PSI at the front, bars on screen now, 20 at the front, 22 at the rear. That extra sort of slightly less pressure, if you like, is gonna give you more contact patch on the ground and better traction and better braking ability. If it's really steep and you predominantly ride very steep trails all the time, you might wanna think about jack in the front end up. So yeah, maybe moving this spacer that's under the stem here uh, on top, sorry, to underneath. That's gonna bring the front end up higher so you're not gonna be pitched over the bars quite as easy. It's gonna help shift your weight a little further back. Braking, when it comes to braking and especially its power, you might wanna think about upping the rotor size or certainly going from a two pot to a four pot caliper as well. That's gonna give you a lot more braking ability, a lot more power to be able to slow down and control your speed when you are going down the steep stuff and also flat pedals. If you're just getting into the steep stuff for the first time or you're trying to learn how to ride steep sections and you're in the clips, ditch the clip, stick some flat pedals on. It can really help with confidence and also sort of that feeling of safety that you can just jump off the bike at any time or actually just move your feet about and sort of help move your body about. Ditch the clips, flats for the wind, that can also help you out massively. But anyway, we're gonna have to travel back in time to a time that I was actually clean and head to the top of the trail. Okay, let's kick things off with steep shoots to begin with. Now they're pretty commonplace in a lot of mountain bike trails. They're the most sort of, I think, straightforward steep thing to ride. And we've got a perfect example of one here. It's obviously pretty rutted in, making it a little bit trickier, but it's fairly straight, it's pretty steep, and it's got a nice big long run out. So here's how you do it. Let's start with the entrance. So. As we enter our steep section, especially our steep rut that we've got here, where am I gonna be looking? Well, I'm gonna be looking at the mid to beginning part of the rut. So that's probably in this case, about three to four bike lakes in front of me. That way I can see what's coming up with enough time to adapt and change maybe speed or body position to what I need to encounter. Right, body position, you're gonna have that further back than you would normally. So you'll be in that sort of attack position, like we said, arms, legs, bent, body is gonna be slightly behind the saddle. And the reason for that is because when it gets steeper, if your weight is still in the middle of the bike and you break or something pitches you forward, you're gonna go over the bars a lot easier and you definitely don't want that. So to kind of counteract any forces, you're almost gonna be parallel with the ground or the angle of the ground that you're on. So your body is gonna be slightly further back. And then let's talk braking. Right, we're in the middle and look at how steep it's getting. Now, a few things that you need to be wary of by this point. Now, first up, I'm gonna talk speed because if you come into this flat out, well, you're gonna go, well, probably into the ferns down there and that's never a good place to end up. So speed modulation is absolutely crucial here. Now, for the front brake is gonna play the biggest role in that. So you wanna be pretty firm on the front brake, but not too grabby. Now, what I mean by this is, you wanna feather that front brake and pull it in hard enough so that you're slowing yourself down because the front brake is, used for the most power, the most uh, effective way to slow down speed, if you like. But if you get too grabby on it, get all handsy, then that front wheel is gonna lock up. And on steep stuff, that is what you don't want. Back brake wise, well, you wanna feather that one as well. You might find that that one will lock up easy because despite having your weight back, it will still lift the back end up just by its very nature of going down steep stuff. So because the back unweights, it locks up potentially easier. But if it's just skidding all the way down, it's not the end of the world, especially if it is just in a straight line. Remember, body back, and now by this point, you wanna be looking towards your exit. You've made it this far, congratulations everybody. You're nearly at the end of your steep shoot, but what do you do? 
Well, don't worry, this is exactly what you do. So by the time you get to this point, you definitely wanna be carrying on looking ahead, if not a little further here, because it does, as you can see, start to mellow on this example. And we've got a fairly standard, pretty easy right-hand turn at the end. So at this point, you wanna be looking at that turn, thinking where you need to be, your line, your body position, and your speed and braking, of course. You can also obviously start to let off the brakes by this point a little bit. Momentum is going to be your friend. Not too much of it, because then that can be your enemy, but just the right amount of speed, and obviously just the right amount of braking as well. So it can really help you obviously carry momentum through the next sections. You've conquered steep stuff in a straight line, but what happens when there's turns involved? What happens when you need to suddenly go down the trail and it steepens up? Well, I've got a couple of great cornering techniques, which I'm gonna to explain to you, which can really help you tackle those steep turns. Take this turn, this is gonna be our example turn. So it's just kind of a normal downhill track, pretty mellow to begin with, and then it's gonna turn real tight left into the rest of the trail, zigzag it's aptly named. Now what am I gonna do here? Well, first technique I'm gonna show you is the endo turn or stoppy turn, and that's pivoting on the front wheel. It's quite, I'll say an advanced technique because it requires a lot of body position, a lot of weight shifting, and also using the front brake quite well. But it can be really good for sort of pivoting on the nose of the bike around tight turns, especially when it gets steep. But be warned, there are some pitfalls to it. So what are the pitfalls, like I said? Well, there are four that I can think of. First up, it's not a very good technique when it's a high speed trail. It works a lot better when it's steeper, nadrier, techier turns. Secondly, it's not the fastest way of turning. If it's speed and you're racing, then this is possibly not always the quickest way of getting around a tight, steep turn. It can send you off balance. Also, if you're not quite got the technique dialed, it can pitch you left or right. And then finally, there's a high chance that it can go over the bars. If you grab too much of that front brake, obviously on something that's very steep, there is a quite a likely chance if you haven't got really good brake control of your whole body weight just going out the front door and see you later. And we don't want that. So here's how you do it. On entry, coming in, I'm gonna be standing up fairly tall on my bike. I'm gonna be in a fairly neutral riding position because it's not too steep coming in. But this, this is where it all changes. This is like the crux of the corner, if you like. This tree here is where the trail dives down steep to the left. And it's here that I'm gonna to start to do my heavy braking with the front wheel. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna slow down fairly rapidly. I'm gonna be looking down the trail. So probably two to three maybe bike lengths down to the left so I can spot where I wanna aim for and shift my weight essentially, because where your hips and shoulders are pointing is where you're gonna end up going. So at this point, I'll then start to stand up tall on the bike, grab a bit of front brake to lift the back wheel up. And it's at that point, I'll start to rotate my body to kick the back end out essentially. So that's where that stoppy kind of nose manual comes in. Looking down the trail, and it's at that point there, only a couple of extra foot further on, because it's such a tight piece of trail, man. You don't travel great distances. We're all about turning here. It's there, I will let go of the front brake, nice and controlled if I can. Smooth on the back brake also, let it go to then ride down the trail. Okay, let's talk about what effect this has on line choice and entrance and exit sort of speed and location when it comes to doing it like this. So, can you see this skid mark on the inside there? That's not actually a skid mark, that's where my front wheel is turning, so it's where I'm doing my pivot essentially. And what that's doing is creating the line there. If I was to ride around this turn fairly conservatively, should we say weight back, pedals level, that's the line you'd go. You'd just skid around there kind of thing or just nice and steady. This mark here, you see this clump of churned up ground? That there is where my back wheel's landing there. Now what that's doing is opening up the turn massively as well. So as I come in, I initiate my en that endo, the back wheel drops to here, and then I'm basically square on in a straight line into this next turn, giving me the best sort of setup for the following section. And you can link that up. If there was another turn, you could then do it and hop around. And what it does is it just actually pivots the bike exactly where you need it to go. It's really useful. The safest way to tackle steep turns, well, it's like this. As you enter the turn, make sure those pedals of yours are level and lead whichever your stronger foot is. Your eyes and your upper body wants to start to tilt into the turn and be positioned looking down the trail where you want to go. And it's at this point, because it's quite steep, you'll then start to turn the bike in, which will become sort of the line that you then choose, the line that your body is already sort of following. And you'll be looking always two to three bike lengths ahead. We're gonna do very much a similar body position as what we did on the shoots at the start of the trail where our butt is back behind the saddle for that weight reason to keep things 
from going too far forwards. We're gonna be nice and controlled on the brakes again. If anything, you could be a little heavier on the back brake and lock that back wheel up to help kick the back end around a bit. Because this is rutted, the rut's actually gonna help funnel us around the turn. But we're gonna be here, we're gonna be nice and strong in the arms to hold our upper body up. We don't wanna be sort of compressing and going over. Eyes always up and ahead and looking around the turn because that way your body's gonna follow and then your bike is gonna follow where you go also. If you've got multiple turns to link together, this is where it gets a little bit trickier, but the same principles still apply. You just wanna stay nice and loosey-goosey on your bike. So when you're leaning it over to the right, you'll then be eyeing up the next corner and just remember, stay nice and fluid so that you then tilt the bike to the other direction, repeat the process, just going the other way, looking ahead around the turn and give it the beans and you're gonna smash it. What happens when all of those things we've previously talked about, shoots, tech, turns, all come together as one and we need to tackle them as a, as a complete package? I mean, look at this section. All the way up there, we've got multiple drops, loose, rooty, rocky, and a turn at the end. What am I gonna do different? Okay, so in the past of this video, in the, the previous sections, I've been saying monitor your speed and sort of keep it nice and controlled and steady. But when it gets to something like this, speed becomes more of your friend the steeper it gets. And that is because essentially, you need speed to clear some of the obstacles and carry momentum. If I go down here sort of teetering on the brakes, weight's really far back. And actually, when it gets a bit wilder like this, my weight's gonna shift ever so slightly forward so I can move around on the bike. If I hit these drops with my butt really far back already, then I've got sort of no room to maneuver or I'm gonna land and buzz my button. Nobody wants that. So speed and sort of maneuverability come into play here, clearing obstacles, carrying momentum, but you still obviously have got to be very controlled on the bike. You've got to be sort of that level of strength has to kind of go up a notch to be able to muscle the bike where you want it. And obviously the forces then get stronger. So when you land off of a drop on the steepness, because you're going a bit quicker and because you're now adding a drop in, you know, that, that body movement of yours becomes exaggerated. So you've got to hold yourself stronger. And then breaking for the turn at the end, I need to be even stronger in my upper body to absorb that force, that heavy braking that I'm going to do that's going to throw all of my body weight forwards. The distance in which you're going to need to look ahead is going to increase as well. So where it might have been two, three, four bike lengths before, on much longer, faster sections of steep trail, you've got to look further ahead. You might be looking six, seven, eight bike lengths. And that's because one, you gotta look at what you're about to do, but then you're also analyzing, because things, things come up much quicker, sorry, you've gotta be planning in your brain one, two steps ahead. So you've gotta be hitting that drop, but I'll be already looking at this next one here and planning what I'm gonna do for that. Lastly, it's back to being loosey-goosey when it gets wildy-wildy. And now I said about being strong, but that's actually being able to absorb impacts and move the bike around. Loosey-goosey, like I said, refers to moving, actually maneuvering yourself so your body and your position on the bike and the bike it's, itself around and putting it where you want it to be. You've got to be a very fluid rider when it gets a little bit crazier like this, and that's going to help you pick your way through sections, down the steep stuff, and adapt to different scenarios at different times. Listen, has this video helped? Hopefully, you overcome some steep technical fears. Well, if it has, let me know in the comments down below. Have I missed anything? Because sometimes we do. Let me also know down below. You know where, but look, whew, I'm out of here. This has been fun. Thank you for watching, everybody. Until next time, see ya.